Yes, how's it going today? I wanted to record today's session just because uh, you know, we've been talking about quantification and using the BIM models as a basis for doing quantification, it's, it's kind of mysterious. There's a lot of good information in the models, but often it sort of seems like it's trapped in the models. And you think about you know, how to get it out most effectively. Um, there's a lot of things we can do right within Revit. Um, but even better, uh, the tool Navisworks has a quantification tool which allows you to kind of a little more systematically uh, approach pulling information out in kind of a cohesive way that then you can go ahead and take over to either Excel and add some costs within there and kind of sum it up within a spreadsheet environment or even uh, more professional like estimating software like Timberline or there's a number of tools which lets you take quantities you know, map it against different unit costs for those quantities and then somehow you know, come up with an answer for what the cost is going to be. In the Autodesk line, they really sort of stop at quantification and not necessarily kind of pulling in databases of cost information and matching it and doing it all. They sort of think of that as being another process that happens later. But in some of the other tools, it isn't. If we look at Vico, we look at Building Explorer, there's somewhere you, you build more of that information into a database that's stored for your company as opposed to having a separate estimating tool. But for this week, we'll, we'll do the kind of Autodesk way. Next week, we'll go ahead and try playing with Vico or like building Explorer so you sort of see you know, what it's like to have it a little more integrated. But just getting going, in fact, as we do this, you know, I'm going to make a real simple little architectural building. Uh, yeah, you guys should make one too. We could go through and kind of contrast it. The idea is, in theory, we should be able to come up with a way of organizing the information and pulling quantities out that we could store as, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what is that? It's like a cost catalog that you can store and apply to any model. So the idea is whether we update the architectural model or the structural model, any of the models, whether we update our own model and kind of make some changes or um, a brand new model comes and you want to apply the same basic thinking about how it would be constructed, how you'd pull out the quantities, you could do that. So I'll just kind of start with doing sort of a real simple little model over here, just because it'll be easy for you to understand. I'm actually going to go ahead and choose a model that has a couple different materials like the brick and the metal studs, just so I have something in there that has a couple different materials. I'll just go through and again do a nice kind of rectangular building. We'll add some features to this building in just a minute. But for now, we'll just put a floor on it. Um, as we're starting to pull things out, I can do everything from the generic floor and then we can map that into a material like concrete or something like that. Or I could actually set up the material here. Ultimately, I should probably do it here, but for now, I'm just go ahead and do it. Even with the idea that it's in the generic floor, I sort of clicked on the wrong line there. Let me get that down. That's going to the core of the walls. So the idea is that the walls are going to wrap around it. There's kind of the core of where the concrete marks it. Here it's metal studs, where that is. Okay, we'll put a little roof on it and call it a day. Okay, so roof by footprint, level two, that's fine. Again, put a little overhang on that. But you could be doing this with a, you know, some other shape. In fact, maybe we'll just change the shape in a little while. So, and what I'm going to do is just take off all these uh, sloping, just to kind of keep it flat for now. Okay, super. In terms of what's happening inside this, I just want to give myself a couple of elements that we could count. So. I'm going to put an interior wall in there so we can put a couple doors in it. Let's say here's a nice little interior wall. Oh, I'll do that one. Okay, we have that. I'll put an interior wall over here. We'll put a couple doors in this. It's a couple windows, just so we have some things to count, because that's the idea, is we're really saying that you started with your preliminary design, and from the preliminary design, you know, we can start doing the quantification. The idea is, though, is as we keep on working and developing our design, we can just uh, have that same information, keep on following this forward. So, I'll put a front door on here, too. 
and maybe a couple windows. I'm going to put these in. I like to kind of think about windows in particular as an alternative just because we tend to count those as individual units. So it's just sort of another example of how we count. So I'll put a couple windows on that side. And then maybe at the front of this building, I'll make a little bit of it into a curtain wall. But again, there's nothing all that picky about what I'm doing. This is all just sort of uh, just to create a sample building. I'll take those two pieces and I'll make them into a curtain wall. And then you have that kind of little standardy building that I always end up creating. Very good. So. Simple little building. So the idea is really as we start to think about how Navis works fits into the picture versus doing it in Revit or something like that, is that we could often go through and just do very quick estimation in Revit. And that's kind of okay. As we think about doing our estimation in Revit, there's just sort of a couple little gotchas in terms of thinking about it. Like for example, I have this roof right now. I sort of would like to kind of keep track of the square footage of the roof and things like that. So typically, if you're going to go through and do this in Revit, you'll create a schedule. And the idea is you can choose the categories of which you want. So I can go through and choose the roofs. And I'll make a schedule of them. So I have roofs. So great. I know that there's kind of a family in type and a certain amount of area. And here's only going to be one of them, so it's not going to be a very interesting schedule. But I can go through and put a total, I can even sort it out by family and type if there were two different types of roofs. And then I will say, oh, I will just sum up the areas. Okay. And that would be okay for doing a really quick, you know, sort of summary of the roofs. So I could do that. Here's my roof schedule. I have 2482 square feet of it, super of a certain type. Okay. And now with that quantity, I could then say I have some unit cost. Oh, you know, it's $50 a square foot for building this type of roof, something like that. And I could apply that. Although I tend not to apply it here. I tend to go through and I'm, rather than trying to build it all in here, I think it's probably better for you to think about putting that into Excel. So instead, just uh, doing that export like we did last time. We'll say export, come on down. It's hiding under there. There it is, export a report. And then we can take it out as a TXT file, which we can then open properly in Excel and start to apply those things. Yeah. We can do the same sorts of things. We can say, oh, let's go ahead and create another report. I'll do one of the walls. So I'll say new schedule of quantities. And I'll say of the walls. And I'll grab those. And again, I have a lot of families and types. And I have some areas. And I can sort of sort them again. Okay, and I'll put a grand total on there and put that. <laughs> that would be a really easy way to do this because <laughs> we do that an awful lot. So great. Here's a wall schedule. So we have a couple different types of wall. We have the curtain wall, which is all 415 square feet. We have some interior wall. We have some exterior wall. So we can ex export this. And the big thing about this is really to think about whether you care about the individual detail or if you really just want gross quantities. You could say sorting and not itemize every instance. And that'll just give you the total amounts. So somehow we could build a number of different sheets or a number of different schedules that all have these numbers that are coming out of the model. And the beautiful thing about this is that ultimately uh, if you're keeping all these things open and you decide to uh, make some sort of change, Pull that wall over. Okay, I got a conflict down there. But somehow the number for the interior wall probably uh, changed in a meaningful way. Yeah, I got a little conflict right there. But this is very typical in that 
what we're trying to do is come up with a, a way of doing this so that the designers can keep on working well the people who are doing the quantification can keep on working too because you know no one has time to wait and you may get partial information it's a great now it's 700 square feet you know it's a moving target they could be doing this like uh, continuously and you somehow have to keep on top of this so keeping it with in Revit kind of works okay in terms of creating out these different you know types of schedules the key is you have to create different types of schedules for example if we wanted to do the windows it's the same sort of thing we have to again create a view we'll create a schedule of the windows or the doors or whatever else we want to get or the railings you know they all uh, estimate a little bit differently family type that's fine and I could say, this is a little bit interesting in terms of these, I have the height and the width. This doesn't actually give me the area. So uh, maybe I'll pull out the uh, height and the width. But we have to figure out for every different thing, type of thing you're estimating, what are the key variables that are most important. So now we have the windows. Windows are kind of interesting. In some way, you almost want to group them by size and then the numbers. The way we tend to think about estimating windows is that you, know, you buy them as units and then you have a certain number of those units and you tend to even estimate the installation as a series of units. So maybe in here, I'll put that in. Okay, I'll get a count. You know, there's four of them, something like that. In this type of a schedule, if you say not itemize every instance, Okay. It's not always clear what's going on, so there's another field I sometimes will add in there. It's in the subtotal there, but we could also pop it in here. Count, which will then show you the number of those units. So if I have you know different windows of different sizes. So great, someone came over, they changed that one to... Okay, pop out there. Let's see what happens over here. That's interesting because I changed that over there. The schedule looks funny to me now because, oh, I know what it is. It's because um, it's not sorted. Okay, basically there are four windows in there right now. What's happening is the things that are blank here are things that are not even. So we have two different sizes, so it doesn't know what to show. It's showing us just blank in there. The reason is if I want to sort it out so that it's segregated by family and type. I can do that. It'll now show us those two different ones. So, so item, not itemizing every interest, you have to be careful to sort of uh, kind of sort into groups based upon the categories that are going to change. Otherwise, you could get these weird blank lines and you sort of wonder well, what that looks like all about. So in general, you know, this is kind of okay, but it's a lot of work to maintain it this way. The only other last variation I want to talk about here, just again, so I catch it on the tape for the people who hadn't heard it last time, was that whole notion of parts. Parts being an interesting way of looking at things. And the issue is, oh, if, for example, I'm trying to sort of figure out how much brick there is in that wall versus how much sheetrock there is in that wall, if I go through and say that, well, if I just look at the wall schedule, I could assume that there is all together 1338 square feet but you know at a high level assumption super and as you start getting a little finer that's not so super because we know there's a little error built into that um, so if I want to distinguish between all those different segments I could say let me select all those and I'll make parts out of them and the reason for making parts is scheduling the parts is a little more accurate so if I now create a different schedule that says, oh, actually I'll do it as a material takeoff. And we'll say, as opposed to just doing walls, I'll do the parts. Okay. And then we could add the material area. And the material name. sort that out. We'll sort it by material name, we'll put the footer on the bottom of it, we'll put a grand total in there, and we'll sum up the areas. Yeah. 
So we just see it's a little bit different. If we look at the brick, it's 1364 versus 1338, which yeah, might be significant. The gypsum wall board's a little bit less. So that was sort of where we were last time. Okay. But what we want to do is say, hey, okay, this is all great in terms of Revit. We get what's going on here, although there's a lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces to keep track of and estimate that it might be better to try and just do this a little more systematically. And that's really where Navisworks starts to come in and be very interesting to us as a tool. So again, to take this to Navisworks for the purpose of quantification, the idea is we just have to start with a, a version of the model that we can export. Anything that's visible in the view that we're looking at now will be exported. Okay, so we do our little Navisworks thing. We say, let's export to Navisworks. Again, if Navisworks has been installed on your machine after Revit was installed, those choices should be available. If they're not available, it usually means that you either installed Navisworks first, and that's probably, it, or for some reason they didn't get installed, but you can add them in later. So we can, if anyone's having that, we can give them some help. Okay, I'm going to take this out. I'm just going to call this my, uh, what is today? Today is February 8th? Yeah. February 8th, sample. Okay, we'll go into Navisworks and we'll take off some quantities related to this, but what I want to look at is actually what happens if, if the building changes, because <laughs> that's sort of, <laughs> you know, really where we're trying to get to with this. Okay, so I'm going to open up Navisworks, bring that building in. Again, in Navisworks, we could be just looking at the single model that everything came here, but especially for people who are working on bigger teams, it can be pulling together the structural model, the architectural model, or the work of a lot of different consultants. Maybe someone's doing the exterior, in fact, even on Y2E2, they did it that way. One team was responsible for the shell of the building, and someone, an entirely different team was responsible for the interiors of the building. And you can bring all that stuff together. Okay, so I have all sorts of stuff open right now. Let me close some of it. So the idea is I want to start by just bringing the model in with all its different elements. So I'll always append. Oops, come back in there. People ask what the difference is between append and merge. And append definitely brings things in, okay, but it actually, if there happens to be duplicate content, okay, so if there are a couple of different things that are the same in different files, it'll keep both of them. Whereas merge removes duplicate content. So if, there, if you happen to have a piece of geometry and I happen to have the same piece of geometry where they're both modeled, for whatever reason we both put it in our file, you know, merge would take it out to make sure there's only one as opposed to two. And I think that happens mostly, it will be cases like, you'll be the structural engineer and you'll put the floor in and I'll be the architect and I'll put the floor in because we both need to look at it. So there might be something uh, confusing that way. I'll say, let's grab the NWC. Let's grab it. And you'll see, here's my very boring little building. Not very well designed, but it'll take, it'll do for what we're doing today. What I want to do is because we're going to do some work in here, we might be creating some sets to sort of sort things out. We might, uh, oh, we're going to do some quantification and store some, you know, kind of special rules about how to take this off. What I'm going to do is save this as, just so I have in Navisworks a copy that I have to recreate from scratch every time. I'll say, let's save it as an NWF. We get a file set, we'll update so that if in an hour from now we update a new model, okay, the rules will still apply. It'll, as opposed to an NWD, an NWD would be static for what's loaded in there right now. Okay, so I'll say this February 8th quantification. Super. So we could do all those things in terms of creating file sets to sort things out in terms of what's big and what's small. There's a lot of things we could do. Or we could just go ahead and look in here. Here's the 
basic organization. This tree is much better than it used to be, because now you can actually say, let's get all the curtain panels, or let's get all the monuments. It seems to do a pretty good job of recognizing level by level the different categories of elements, which is useful to us. Yeah. Used to be it was much worse about that, so we really depended on our file sets to do a better job of uh, organizing things. But let's go ahead and try and see if we can do this. We'll say quantification. Okay. So quantifications is one of the major tools on the home tab. Okay. We'll say great. Not just the sheet browser. That's not so good right now. That's just if we're going to do from, uh, what would I say? That's the different models in there. Quantification actually can handle two different things. You can set it up so that you can pull the 3D objects, which are good because their geometry is embedded. It could also be used to like grab 2D objects. So if, for example, you were going to take off the carpeting on the floor or the hardwood, and no one had bought, um, actually modeled it, you, know, you can just look at a floor plan view and trace the outline. And, you know, it's kind of actually the way estimators used to work. We would have a floor plan, and you take out your marker, and you highlight different areas. Okay, so I'm just going to close that up since I'm not going to work with the 2D stuff right now. But I'll say project setup. I'll say, not do the tutorials now. We should do them at some point because they're actually quite good. It's the whole question, are we going to use a catalog now? These catalogs, again, are the really just a hierarchy that's already been pre-set up of um, like a work breakdown structure that you could use for just uh, organizing your quantity takeoff. So there's these different CSI formats with different levels of detail. There's uniformat, or you can create your own. So in the end, you're probably going to create your own because in these catalogs are not only the organization, but also the rules that apply. So we can start with those, or I'm actually going to say none for now, just because for this little building, I'm going to assume I'm going to come up with my own little work breakdown structure, whatever makes sense. But again, we could either choose one or say none, or we can choose one and add our own categories to it. It's really just a way of organizing the information. So I'm just going to say none. Okay. Um, what units we prefer? This is interesting. Model values are read as is. So either converted to, comp uh, converted to imperial or metric, or just whatever they came in as. But again, that could all be converted later. So now we're really ready to start taking things off in a more systematic way. And the reason we sort of like to do it here is that we can go through and just grab things from the model and keep it into a single report as opposed to you know, all those different schedules and views that are in you know, all those different like uh, windows. So for example, if I want that roof, and that's a certain type of roof, it's the basic roof right now. You'll see there's sort of a wood frame roof. It's only one of them, so it's not very interesting in terms of what's going on. But if I want to go through and grab that, what I can do is, oh, come on down here. You gotta think always about how to organize this because the window is a little strange in here. These are items. What I actually want to do is kind of create a group. Hide the item categories. So you can just kind of show the takeoff, virtual takeoff. Let me come back in here. I want to do this to a new catalog item. This is the workbook. Let me go through and find one other thing, which is where the catalog is. The catalog is the structure that you're actually going through and setting up. So let me just go ahead and find it. Because, is it here? OK, the item catalog or the resource catalog. but I'm not actually seeing it. I'm going to go look for a window. Because I think of them popping up. Maybe. Oh, there's a resource catalog over there. Oh, here's item catalog. No, it did actually switch to it. OK, so here's how we can start organizing things. Um, if we want to have a new grouping and then a new, like the way this basically works, it's just sort of a hierarchy you're going to create. So. Maybe I'll create a category called grouping called roofing. 
Okay, then a new item in there is going to be, oh, this is going to be my flat roof. So it's just really a catalog. There's nothing really else to it. It's just sort of a grouping. Let's, in fact, even let's go through and create another group in here. I'm going to create my walls. And I'll create a new item under there. I'll say these are my brick walls. And a new item also under there. I'm going to call this my curtain walls. Now, this is just my way of organizing it. You know, there could be other ways. I can say, great, there's another group over here for, oops, I don't want a group with under there. That's not what I had in mind. No, not there. Maybe with nothing selected. New group. Okay, let's go ahead and do windows. Keep on doing that. Let's go ahead and do doors. Foundations, whatever. We're just creating our own little category and we can organize these whichever way we want. Within here, we can sort of keep it all there. I can sort of say I have, you know, whatever it makes sense. I have big windows versus small windows. I have exterior doors. Versus interior doors, and again, there's no. Well, I don't want to say there's no logic. There's no set order to this. It's really whatever makes the most sense to you in terms of the way you think about estimating these things. Okay, so here's one potential like a like a way of looking at it. Super. I got the item catalog there. Oh, here we go. My quantification workbook. So I have these different categories. Now what I'm able to do. So I have the item catalog. I have the resource catalog. We're going to get to that in a minute. That's uh, laborers or brick or plywood or resources that are going to be consumed. But what I want to do is basically start mapping these items that are up here in the selection tree to these different items down here. So for example, if I want to go through and grab all the pieces of basic roof and want to put it into flat roofs, okay, it'll be there. Now, in terms of the model and keeping track of what you've taken off and you haven't taken off, you can hide the takeoff. Hide the takeoff says, okay, only show me the things that don't belong to a category yet. Or I can say, show the takeoff, which only shows me the things that I have taken off. Okay. Or can have them both turned on. So it's useful to sort of be pulling things in and hiding things because you can sort of see what's left over that you haven't taken into account yet. So in the same sense, I could go through, okay, I have a couple different types of windows over here. Let me hide the takeoff items. That way you'll sort of have just the leftovers. So let me get these. I'm gonna call them big windows. I'm going to get these, I'm going to call them small windows. Notice as I put them in, there's a number. And then also there's the specific items that are next to it. There's some information reported over here. We're going to start calculating some information about how to you know, think about all these. Because for something like the windows or the doors or something like that, we're going to think about everything in terms of, are you going to compute an area? Or are you going to compute a length? Or are you just going to count them in terms of the way you're going to estimate them? OK. So I got some windows and doors. That's fine there. We'll sort of take off what's there. Let's go through and grab some walls, under walls. Almost all the wall is this basic wall. Uh, but we do have a couple of different wall types. Even here, I have the brick walls. There's four of those. As you tally up individual ones, you'll see that there's all these individual kind of, it's reporting the model length, the model width, the model area. So even what it's reporting now up here above the line, so the individual items are here, but up above it is really the summary. So I can see that, you know, all together there's 1,500 square feet of brick wall. Uh, my question is, yes. will, uh, will, the, will the area dis uh, 
the subtracted area of the door. Yes. It's quite good about that. So the doors, the windows, it's quite good about, yeah, subtracting that. So if you had a lot of windows, it makes a big difference that, you know, you don't have to include that in the brick and stuff like that. So quite smart about that. Okay. Curtain walls. Oh, actually, even here for the walls, I'm weird, so I, I left out sort of interior walls. So let me go back to the item catalog. And I'll add a new item in there called interior walls. Okay, so now we're just sort of getting the gross quantities. What will happen is, I'll go back to the quantification workbook, is as we get further, we can say, oh, this is going to mean there's two layers of sheetrock. In fact, we'll do that in just a second here. Uh, let's go to the interior walls right here. So there's four interior walls right now. Looks like we only have a few things left over. We'll say there's some single flush doors. This is sort of an interesting one. They're all just sort of grouped together now. So this is one where either we can tag them in such a way that we can figure out what interior, exterior doors are, or we just drag them in manually. But let's sort of see what we have. That's an interior door. This one over here, I bet, is also an interior door. Okay, finally have some curtain walls. What do we have here? We have curtain wall panels in mullions, which is kind of interesting. Even there, you, we probably want to sort of sub-distinguish within there. So maybe even here under walls, it'll make sense for us in the item catalog since, you know, estimating the mullions is a certain length of aluminum versus the panels are a certain square foot. We can decide what we want to do. But under here, maybe I, instead of this, I'll say, let's do a group called curtain wall parts. And then under here, I'll create an item which is called you know, curtain panels. And the item there called back over there. Now, get any order you want. But the nice thing is, as we build this up, you know, it should work for well. We'll add some rules. It'll make more sense then how to make sense of this. Okay, so I got some mullions. Is it going to go in there? Hang on. I think I still have a group. So the way it sort of works is there's categories and there's a family. That's the family right there. You have to kind of get it at that level. So what was happening, I was selecting a little too high in the hierarchy. It's 49 mullions. Jeez Louise. Okay, and under panels, there's a system panel, a glaze system panel. Okay, I think I can get those. So super, I know that all together is 367 square feet of glazing. Okay, great. So at some level, you know, I have, except for the slab, I have most things kind of taken care of. And there's a nice floor. Even under the item catalog, I'll just make a new item called Floor Slabs. What is my first year? Yeah. So we can only change the catalog in the catalog, I mean, item catalog here. Yeah, you have to change, to, to, change change the, to change the hierarchy, yeah. So there's these different things. To change the catalog, go to that view, and then in quantification work, it shows the hierarchy that you defined. Okay, and then uh, we'll go from there. So you have to kind of watch out for that. Okay, super. Okay, so I know there's you know 2,000 square feet of that, something like that. Okay, so at some level, we've got it all tallied up. Super, let's just go ahead and save this away. You know, all the items are taken off in some form. So for each of those different items, the model reports a lot of information. So for example, for the floor slab, we have a perimeter, we have an area, we have a volume, okay? And we have all these different sort of things that are sort of coming through. There's, you know, yeah, just model, well, yeah, perimeter area and volume. There's actually sort of an account in there somewhere. Quantity, primary quantity, okay, there. 
But let's go ahead and think about how we could use this. Because for each of these different items, there's things that you want to keep track of. So for example, here's my little floral hanging around in here. It's one foot thick. So let's think about for any individual item what you may want to you know, come up with. For example, for these windows or the doors, the doors are kind of easy. Let's go to the doors. Okay, you're in the catalog here. There's the whole notion of there's all these different things, area, width, volume, all that kind of stuff. The key is really what is it that you think is the one that is really the most important thing that to pull out. You're going to get them all. You're going to get weight, volume, area, perimeter, all those things. Although perimeter doesn't count for the door with the areas. But you sort of decide what is the primary quantity. So if I come back over here to doors, you even within here, let me see where you assign this, you get to sort of say what is the primary category. So in this case, if it is the count, I can fill that in and I get to put a label on that. So if I'm going to say, and this is just for as it reports out, when we put this all and send it to Excel, it's going to report all those numbers. But what do you want to be the, the one thing? If it said quantity, what would you do? It is it a, is it a count item? Is it a square foot item? Is it, what is it? Okay. So by changing that in the catalog, what's happening over here is back over in the quantification workbook, Okay, I now know, you know it's giving me that. So that's the primary, even though all these things will be available. That'll be the one thing. So same thing over here for interior doors. If I'm really going to think of them as being more of a count item, I can say great. Okay. Now, as we're building these up, though, it's not just sort of the counts. Oh, let's get some other things in here, even in terms of, oh, let's say the curtain panels. If the curtain panels, if we think of them as being primarily about the area of the curtain panels, because we want to think about just how much glass we're buying, if that's how the estimators do it, so great. We can say that we want to say is equal to the area. So now, in the same sense, when you go over into the quantification workbook and you say curtain panels, there's 367.58. Um, I believe it has to sort of match that, just the same, in terms of, yeah, matching that, and then all of a put the square feet in there. We go, we can change the units. If we change the units, we can sort of mess around. This is where, even if you want to do some sort of like weird calculation to transfer between, yeah, kind of units, we can go through and adjust it here. Okay. But what we want to start thinking about is really how we can do something that is a little like more interesting than just the numbers that are in there. For example, we can set up some resources that are really, you know, kind of related to how much actually comes in here. For example, I have a floor slab here. Okay, and this floor slab actually does have a volume. Let's see if we can find it. You know, it has a volume right now of like 2,000. Okay. At some level, I would like to think of that as actually being 2,000 cubic feet of concrete. Yeah, so what I want to do is actually associate a resource with it, okay? So I can resource, uh, add resources for materials. I can add resources for people or equipment. I can add anything that are really things that are associated with these quantities and relate them together. So. If, for example, I come over here and I'll create a new grouping. I'll just call it materials. Okay, and then I'll make a new resource underneath that. This is going to be my concrete. Okay, I can do another one for, you know, brick. I can do another one for sheetrock. Maybe a new group. I'm going to have like types of, oops, let me take that out of there. I can do types of equipment that might be used. 
or I can do a new group which is going to be types of uh, labor. So, you know, whether this is going to be a laborer or this is going to be a carpenter, whatever it is that I'm going to go ahead and try and build up my crews with, I can start setting these up. And for each of these different resources, you know, you can start thinking about just really, oh, yeah, how you want to start tallying things up so they sort of work together. Let me go ahead and see if I can make the mapping work, because I think this will work over here. Okay, I always have to remember where we do this. Use a resource. I think that's going to be okay, but let's think about this. If I say use an existing one, okay, so I'm going to say let's pull out the concrete. So let's see what's happening. <coughs> So concrete is part of floor slabs. So now if we say that, what we can say is that the concrete that's related here could be equal to basically the volume. That's going to be that we really want to have you know, as the amount of concrete. Okay. So we could actually put in something more elaborate than that, but just pulling out the volume of the concrete. We could also uh, put some formula. Oh, yes. Exactly. We could say, you know, times 0.8. Okay, and then we would be able to do that. In fact, we're going to do that when we do the walls. We'll do jip board is two times the wall there. Right. Yeah, stuff like that. So, super. And this is going to be in cubic feet. In fact, you know, if you wanted to allow that there's always a little bit of overage and there's going to be a little waste or something like that, we could have put it in oh, 1.05. Super. So what's going to happen now is because we have that associated in the item catalog with floor slabs, if I come back over here and go to the floor slabs, okay, and we say the concrete, okay, so now I have a quantity of concrete which is associated, you know, with the floor object. So that's quite okay. Same sort of thing, let's do the wall one, because that's a good one. We have these interior walls here, that's fine. So if within that I wanted to I'll say for in, in the catalogs, it's all setting up a hierarchy. For interior walls, I'm going to say use a resource. So use an existing resource as opposed to creating a new one. We're going to go through and grab the sheetrock. OK, so now it's showing up as a hierarchical piece. I could also say that, oh, you know, whether it's going to be a carpenter, who's going to actually kind of build this wall? So I could use that in the item, too. So now we'll go back and sort of think how does the how do these resources relate to the quantities? So sheetrock over here, we say, oh great, okay. If the wall area is you know X, we're gonna say this basically might be if it's two sides, it's two times the area. Okay. If we knew that it was double-sided, then it might be four times the area. So great. Carpenters are a little bit interesting. This is kind of, we could say that our estimate for the number of, you know, we could either sort of just pass it through that there's a certain amount of area that's going to be going to the carpenter to have to install, and then apply the factor for how many hours are going to be used to install it based on the area. We could do that in Excel, or we could do it here, either sort of way. Because we could say that, okay, it's going to be the area, you know, oh, he's able to do 50, you know, per hour, whatever it is here. And then we can say that this is going to be, let's see if we can find. It's the space from this, so we have the area, and that's how it's in the space, and it's like. Nah, it's, it'll, it'll, can, it'll put it all together. <laughs> it's interesting. In this case, it's not giving me hours, so it would just be each. That be true. Even here, let me try this for a second. That is just the resource for carpenter. I see, so we can go through and do that. Okay, 
needs this. Okay. It's interesting though, because you can go through and add things up, you know, even further. You know, we can we can edit this so it does something a little like more elaborate in terms of what's uh, like uh, you're being stored within the formulas. Let's kind of see how this works. So I have my interior walls. Great, there's 270 of that. We have sheetrock. We have the carpenter. That's the volume. Let's go back over to the primary quantities. So in those interior walls, we know that there is uh, 17, okay, and 13, okay, there. So even, let's go back to interior walls. We go back to my catalog. And I say over here, interior walls, my primary quantity over here is just going to be the area. Whereas in sheetrock, it's going to be two times the area square feet. Carpenter, it's going to be divided by 50. I wish I had hours in here. I don't think I can do that. No. But interior walls, which is going to be in square feet. Super. So we come back over to the quantification, and what do we got here? So I have you know, 600 square feet of wall, I have 1,300 square feet of short sheetrock, and 13.716, in this case the unit is carpenter hours, or something like that. So super, it's really just a way of embedding this stuff so that you start to have the formulas, and really what we want to do is for each of these different items, is go through and think about, you know, you have the total amount for all the walls. You know, even up here, if I go walls, it's broken into interior walls, exterior walls. It's to go through and just sort of build up the hierarchy so you have this uh, nice, you know, Excel table that really has all this information in it. Let me save this. Let me pause there and sort of see, you know, ask some questions about it because we'll, we'll export that. We also want to say, what happens if we bring in a new model? Question. My yeah. question is, uh, I think we have divide, uh, divided the, the whole wall into parts in the Revit. Yes. So when we when we append the Revit file into this, yeah. uh, it, will it show all the parts or it just... This is a very good question because this is sort of, yeah, you're under a really good issue about what does and doesn't come across. It, by default, the Revit parts don't come. Uh -huh. But if we want the Revit parts to come, what we'll do is when we say export it in Navisworks settings, we'll say, oh, I gotta find it in here, convert URLs, oh, convert construction parts. If I do that, then the parts will come. So then that would be quite okay because then I will have the more accurate estimates. So if I do that, when I bring them into my uh, like model, this should look a little bit different. In fact, let's do that. Let's just sort of see what that looks like. go back over here. We'll come back and we'll go over to uh, Navisworks. Okay. And we actually have this sort of interesting thing going on. We have what's called a catalog now. We actually have a little catalog of stuff going on. Yeah. So what we'd like to actually do is be able to save some of these rules. They're very good rules now, but they're sort of the beginning of some good rules. Let's see if I can find where we save the catalog. That's exporting the quantities. Import a catalog. Oh, export catalog right there. Okay. So this is where we've created a catalog, and our catalog now has both items and resources, all these sorts of things. So I can say, let's export this. And I'm going to save this just as a, you know, a little something or other that we can use between uh, different projects.
projects. I think this is going to work. OK. OK, let's save this away. So two things. One, we're going to find out about, like, you know, can we apply the catalog to a new project? We're also going to go ahead and see what happens to the parts. So I was like, great. OK, so far so good. Uh, let's just uh, create a new one. Navisworks won't let you keep more than a single model open at a time. Yeah, it's just sort of what it is. So we'll come back over here. And we'll say with parts. So it should look very much the same. Let's see what it looks like under the tree here. Come back. Come back. Over there. So we think under the walls. Ah, we have a whole series of parts of different time. It's interesting, though, about you know how to make sense of that, though, because they are there in different layers. What I'm thinking about is when I put them in the catalog, you know, I don't want to have to grab them a time at a time. Yeah. So maybe, well, let's think about this. We might have to go through and define a search criteria where somehow the name is equal to gypsum wallboard or something like that and do them that way. Let's just kind of try this for a second. I'll say project setup, because yeah, it's, it's a good question. Yeah, if you bring them in, what happens? Say so remind me later. Okay, so now we could actually browse to a catalog since we have a catalog that we saved already. Let's see if I can find it. I think I put it on my desktop. That was it, new catalog. What a fantastic name for it. <laughs> okay, so I'll say okay. Okay, so because we've done this, the quantification, the item catalog, the resource catalog, they're there, which is good. So now we can start to save it on two different projects and kind of carry it across. Okay, and even the rules are there in terms of if I bring the interior walls in, it should know that, you know, the parts are parts. Okay, so but let's go ahead and figure out what we can do. There's nothing in there right now. If we do bring that in, oh, the interior walls, that's okay. So that'll work the same as it used to, okay? That's not going to be any different. So super, my interior walls are there. I have my number of carpenters. I have my number of whatever. That all should look the same. A certain amount of sheetrock, a certain thing. Beautiful. Okay, that part stayed the same. Woo -hoo, that part's good. Let's think about now this other issue here of the brick walls. Because if I bring them in, let's see what actually happens. If I just bring them in as that, I'm very curious. Okay, but what do we have here? It's a bunch of different areas. See, it all just kind of considers to be a bunch of parts. So that's not so good. Okay, so let's uh, remove that or we'll undo that. So I think if we're going to use parts, we have to actually sort of get a little bit smart about this. So let's see what we can figure out about this thing. So here it is. Let's only show this thing. See if we can sort of figure out the scheme that we have to use. Uh, where is the hide? I want the hide unselected. Beautiful. Okay, there's my piece of sheetrock. So let's see if I can figure this out. I always have to do this uh, where I go properties, because I gotta figure out how I can talk about this thing. So it's an item. It's a part, but then the material is gypsum wallboard. Okay. Let's see if we can figure make a criteria that actually does that. So let's say find. Okay, 
So the property, the name is part now. Yep. So the item name is part. Okay. Let's try how we can figure this out. Don't mess with me. Hang on, where'd it go? Oh, there it is, right in the middle. Save that. Let's find all. It's getting a bunch of them. Super. Let's go ahead and this is the part where we have to save it. Uh, under sets. So I want to create a new search set that has that criteria. So with that, those four parts, now we can go through and in our catalog over here, say for the brick walls, let's go ahead and put a new item underneath that will let us do an item, not only under there. So I'll delete that. So what I'm going to have to do is put a new group. And then put a new item under that. go through and associate this with that. Oh, I'm in the, ad I'm in the adding catalog, excuse me. I need to be over in the quantification workbook. Did you come through? Not quite. Why are you not there? Your parts? Oh, do I have to do it over here? I have to do it over here. Let's try this. There we go. Now we got the four parts across there. So now we have a more accurate read on that. But it's definitely a lot of work to kind of set it up and this whole issue of making sure that things are accounted for, you know, it's, it's quite tricky to go through and do that and really, yeah, get it all right. Let's do another one in here. We'll say this is going to be, so let's get the brick while we're at it. So let's find all those. You'll see there's a different list. I'll save that away as a different criteria. Okay, and then we can take those. They're selected. Some over here. I'll go to the catalog. Under there, I'll create a new item. I can't spill today. It's interesting. And now we could go through and grab those and... Oh, you're correct. <laughs> I should always look for that little zero. The number is a good indication of whether you're in the right uh, version or not. Okay, so for the four walls, now we have a certain amount of brick in the area. And now, in theory, let's go into brick walls. We should even see under here that, yeah, the areas are a little bit different. 1304 versus 1363. So we can start getting them that way. So either way should kind of work. But let us do this because it's early, you know, as we uh, kind of wrap up today. And then you go, you go to class, right, at 12.10 or 12.15 or 12 o'clock? Uh, I'm planning to go to office after 12. Oh, very good. Okay. Let me do this little thing on, we're going to, 
update the model and bring that in and see if it's very different because that'll be you know, kind of the next logical thing. So let me go ahead and I'll just save this as. And I'll say, great, it's a, uh, I'll say yeah, it's so parts. That's a little bit weird, but I think it should be. Um, and then number four. Okay, super. And we'll just go back to our other one. I'll uh, say new again. So the idea is we wanted to go through and be able to sort of say, hey, what happens when things change? Because things change. <laughs> and let's go ahead and make a small change to the Revit model. Where'd Revit go? Oh, it's back over here. Uh, there. Okay, so we'll make a couple of different little changes. Okay, one thing we can do is we can try adding something. And, you know, so, okay, something happened, and we'll try, let's say, oh, what is it? Someone decided to add some more interior wall. Yeah, this is not a very good architectural design, but, okay. And then, oh, someone added a new door. That is fine. But let's also take something out too. You know, okay, and then while they were working, they decided to take out this window. Okay, and we're gonna replace it with some other window over here. Why does the window not want to place? Window. It looks good to me. Um and modify a place the window. Why do I want to place there? I'm curious. It's just, uh, I'll go think about why this is not placing. It's kind of weird. Window. Hmm. Okay. Couple new windows. Super. Okay, so our model's changed. Even, oh, let's do something not very big here. We'll just say, yeah, the roof got bigger. Okay, so a lot of little changes because, you know, the architect keeps working, everyone works. So let us go through and we're gonna export this out again. This time, I'm not gonna do the parts. I'm gonna turn that part off, although I think I could ignore it just as well. Um, and I'm gonna save it out. I'm gonna put it out on my desktop again. I can put it to the same name as the prior file, or I could go through and uh, like give it a new name. If I give it the same name, what will happen is when I reopen the NWF, it will automatically read it in. If I gave it a new name to be February 8B, then I would have to point it to it. I'd have to link it to it and say, okay, apply all your thinking to this new model instead. I'll just give it the same name for now. Sure. Okay, so we'll go back over to Navisworks. Okay, here we are in Navisworks. What I'm gonna do is just open up the NWF the file set, and then it'll point to and use the new version that we have WC. So that should be quite okay. And those hierarchies we created will be kept. Yes. Although, notice an interesting thing here. Can you see the view is a little funny because what we have now is we have hide takeoff turned off. So these are the things that are new mm -hmm. as far as it's concerned. Okay, so, you know, as we come back in, you know, there, there's some other things that got taken away, but it knows that those items are new or those items have not been taken off yet. There you go. Okay, I can say show it got taken off, but really hide the takeoff. Okay, those are the ones that are still not there. How can we include this? Windows into this hierarchy. Yeah. You have to find them in the exactly. But what we can do is sort of even make it 
easier. Let me see if I can remember how to do this exactly. Because there's one, update the takeoff. Hang on. To correspond with the model. And the other is analyze the model. Okay, so we're going to start with this. We're going to say, let's start by analyzing. And even here, let me think about this. Da, 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 da. Uh, question if the file is very big, like a very big, uh, big house, uh, you have a lot of a lot of things in this hierarchy. Then yeah. how can you distinguish which one are imported in the in this structure, which one are not imported? Uh, the easiest way is again, it's the hide. But let's see if it even makes a difference over here. Because if I hide the things that are already imported, yeah. it, it'll just be like these guys. Yeah. So we can choose them. Yeah, so it's quite tricky. Even over here, I think because of the hide, because see how the ones are grayed out over here? So even, let's go to Windows, let's see the same thing. Ah, so it's the gray versus not so gray. Okay, so hide is actually quite good. There's also some other things that are sort of interesting in here. Notice I said analyze, and it actually came back over here, and it put these little blue dots over here. So. What that's telling me is the doors and the foundation hasn't changed. But these things that have these little, little I think they're almost like blue eye or exclamation points or something like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are actually things where things, things have changed. So let's see what we can figure out. Under roofing, under flat roofs, okay, it thinks this item has changed somehow. Okay. So right now, currently there's about 2,400 square feet of it. Okay. I think what I have to do, let me see if I can do this right in here, not there, I think it's under update, I can say, oops, let's see if I find it in here, it's not, do I have to select the row, do I have to do it down here, oh there it is, right? there it is, I have to choose this, I think it's here, let me see if I can do this, update, there, select the row, Update selected from model. So what is going to happen now is this row, which has the blue dot on it, we're going to update it. So now it's 3,000 square feet, so that'll be up there, and that'll be cleared. So what this quantification is doing is it's kind of keeping a running tally of everything that, you know, changed. So now I have 3,000, 3,000 there, so super. So it doesn't change it automatically. You have to go back in and... Uh, kind of fix it, but it does a pretty good job of, uh, like for brick walls here, let's see what's going on here. It thinks two of the rows are a little bit different. I don't know why they're different. What could it be? Oh, it's because um, when I added the windows, mm -hmm. it actually took out a little bit of brick. Mm -hmm. which, which two are changed and which two are the same? Yes, this is this one here. probably hiding under there. Let's see if we can come up with a way to see it easily. I don't see it very well in terms of that. Although it's right over, hang on. In terms of what are these, these are brick walls. It's this wall right here. And this one over here, let's see what this one is. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and then we'll, let's just rearrange the appearance. interesting when I notice when I select them here and I select it here the two are in okay so let's say let's hide the unselected okay so that wall we know changed because it has those two windows I'm sort of curious about what the other one changed let's come over here oh you know why it changed I know which one this one is too this is the one on the front where I took the window out <laughs> Are you hiding? Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are the two. 
So in the same sense, what we'll do is we'll choose this row. And I'll try to get both. And I say update, select the row. Okay. And I say, okay, I agree with both these changes. So super. We'll go both go in there. For the windows over here, you notice that big windows is kind of wrong here. Somehow, this one, notice it's not blue. So it, uh, it even says the takeoff model was deleted. I, you know, the model item was deleted. Okay, it's a little, there's this little color scheme. The blue seems to be things that are changed. The gray is things that got deleted. I wish it were green or something to say that was new. <laughs> But we'll choose this, and in the same sense, we'll say, okay, let's grab your row. Select the row, and then we'll delete it. Okay, so super announcement. So when this over here has no, when the quantification workbook has no more I symbols, has no more uh, kind of tags to indicate that things are off, you're sort of good, although we're still not 100% right there because I'm hiding the takeoff although I have to unhide everything because it's you know turn that off let's say unhide all and then I'll go back and hide the takeoff okay so these are the items that are still missing in action and you see they're even sort of grayed out over here so over here in the same sense are the ones that are not grayed out so these are the three walls that are still missing so I'll go back and put them in again as so I want to get these walls across. There we go. Okay, and again the sheet rock and the carpenters. I want to get these two windows across. are going to be in my big window category because I'm going to think about big windows and you know whatever it is I apply a different unit labor rate or I, I do something a little bit different and I got that door so what else this is like some sort of interior door yeah super so oh, uh, got one more Oh, is that what it is? Oh, no, what, that's a, it's still an interior. Where is that one? You. Oh, I put them in the wrong category. Well, that's not a very smart thing to do at all, is it? <laughs> How did I get them out of there? That's... Just go back. Oh, correct. Good idea. A little undo should always be good. No. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay. Although, well, hang on, they're still considered taken off. So, what do I have to do? I go here. I'll try show take off. Okay, that's a window. That's a window. Oh, no, I'm okay. My doors are down there. Well, those are windows that are counted as doors now? Yes. Okay, so in terms of this, I wonder if I can move them. That would make so much sense, but I don't think you can. <laughs> that would certainly work. Select takeoff small items. Nope. Select the row. No luck. Okay, so for Bo's suggestion, we'll get this one and we'll get that one and we'll update. Ooh, not there. Select the row. We'll delete the selected takeoff. Okay, now if we hide the takeoff. Oh, that's interesting. Now, nah, because I, I would think that's a little strange. I still want them to show up even though they're in a different category. Or did I just get them double counted? Not to worry. I'm getting myself confused. There's a door. I'll put that in as one of my interior doors. Okay, I'm going to 
three interior doors. Okay. When you get all done with this, the tail end of the whole process is my very low battery. So it's time to stop, which it is. We'll say we'll export all this stuff to Excel. Either all of them or just the selected quantities. So whatever part of the workbook we want. But we'll say let's export it all. Okay, I'll just put that out on my desktop. And what it creates is like a big tabbed Excel table, which is actually pretty useful. It has all the data, it has the resources, it has the it's a resources pivot table. So that is for the interior walls, carpenter and sheetrock. So like these pivot tables so you can sort of summarize things or you know, not summarize things. The items, the pivot table here of roofing, curtain wall panels, all the things that are under there. So you can really start, you know, kind of yeah, pulling things together in whatever sort of makes the most sense. So this is interesting. So even here under walls, curtain walls, this is actually not a bad one here. Doors, exterior, interior, foundations. This is like a very nice, just high level summary. So the idea is now you can pull all these out and then, you know, adjust all these things, uh, you know, using the pivot table tools to add costs to them and create a nice cost report for it. So in general, the big thing is, Model in Excel, all right, in Revit, kind of keep that up to date, bring it in, and then as for every version, you know, kind of try to pull it into the quantities that make sense, build the formulas to pull out the quantities that make sense, you know, in Navisworks. Keep it up to date there every time you kind of change things, but hopefully, since you now have a catalog, you won't have to kind of recreate every time. It sort of is applicable even to a new project because we could apply it to your building and my same catalog would apply. I just have to sort of drag the quantities into the right categories. You might have to set up some sets to help you get things into the right categories, that's right. But then ultimately, you know, take it over to Excel for, this is where I would recommend putting the cost information in here because even like the idea of for that wall, how many man hours? And that may be uniform across different you know, areas in the Bay Area or different parts of the country. But the cost would probably be different if you were doing it in Palo Alto versus doing it in Fresno versus doing it in New York. So it's nice to think about, keep that in Excel a little bit separate. Because you know, the quantities are the same, but the costs differ. Even, you know, oh, the cost of getting the curtain panels, you know, that may keep on changing. The quantity won't change, but the cost per square foot will change just based as the architect keeps on changing uh, the materials properties. So make things that are going to be changing very rapidly accessible to you in Excel and really use Navisworks just to sort of, you know, pull out the quantities in a way that makes sense. Okay, beauty. Okay, let us pause there for today and then uh, Next time we get together, we're going to try doing something very similar, but I'm going to try and do it in Vico instead, which is another one of the tools that lets you take these, and it looks at the idea of how you create formulas and quantities a little bit differently. It has another way of making formulas, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's all good to contrast. Okay, cool. Let us stop that over there, and...